Hey guys, this is Sam from Polycoop, and uh, this video is going to be about our MCU that we've developed specifically for EVs and EV conversions. Now, the gist of this video is going to be clips of me driving it over several days and going over some of the features that you're seeing on your screen. Uh, I did my best to record as best as I could, but I used a phone and a GoPro, so <laughs> I apologize in advance if it's a little shaky or not very clear, but I'll do my best. So. Uh, let's get started at 3 o'clock in the morning with me going for a drive <laughs> um, You'll see that I just put the the car into gear and uh, Any commands that you use that you send using the MCU are double tap So you don't accidentally send a command that you're not trying to send uh, on the bottom left hand side You'll see that there's the gears that you can send to the drive unit You can also select if you want creep if you want to turn regen on and off and the, the power output of the motor um, so as I begin this drive, I just selected the tire pressure gauge and you'll notice that each of those sensors are not reporting anything yet. And that's done to preserve the, the battery of the sensors. So uh, unless you're driving or there's a sudden change in pressure within the sensor itself, it's not going to show you anything. So you'll see as I start driving that the sensors do come online. Um, and uh, the really cool thing about these sensors is that they also show you the temperature of each wheel. Now this is cool because you can know that the pressure that you're seeing is that the cold uh, air pressure or is it the hot air pressure. Um, so that's a really nifty thing to have. Another thing that you'll notice is that below the graphic of the car is a number and that number is the PSI of the wheel that you want a warning to come on. So for example, I have it set to 30 PSI and if one of the wheels happened to be below 30 PSI, I would get a warning uh, saying that, you know, that the tire is low and that I need to put air into it. Uh, this is cool because now you can select uh, whatever tire pressure your particular car has and uh, you can set it to whatever you're comfortable with. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is the navigation system. So there are several ways to get into the navigation system. Uh, the easiest being is pressing the yellow uh, triangle icon you see on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Uh, once you're in the, the navigation screen, you can select the destination that you'd like to go to by putting it into the bar on the top hand side. It, it's very similar to any navigation system that you've ever used. Um, and so once you've uh, entered the destination, you'll start routing. And over here you can see that we're driving. Um, and then you can see that uh, it's giving you directions at the bottom, so it's telling me to take the, that exit 163 in 10 miles. Um, and it will just give me updates as I, as I drive along. So while we're on the screen, uh, I'll just quickly go over what's on the left-hand side. Uh, you'll see that we have on the top left our RPM gauge. And as that number increases, so does the bar around it. Uh, it starts to fill up. Uh, then we have our speed to the right hand side and then we have our battery state of charge So it comes as a percentage and then below the icon is our estimated range based on how we've been driving So as I drive more aggressively that number will go down if I drive more calmly that number will go up and Below that is our instant power. So to the right hand side It's gonna give you when you're uh, producing power and then uh, it's gonna go to the left and green uh, when we're regening uh, below that is our motor inverter and battery temperatures and then further below that is our uh, error panel. So if there was something wrong with the motor or we had a weak cell, um, we would see it over there. And then we also have our odometer, average efficiency, and trip odometer below that as well. Now, coming back to the navigation system, if we click on the three uh, circle icon over there that I'm clicking right now and click charging stations, you'll see that the map populates with uh, all the charging stations in your area. And you're able to select which charging stations uh, you'd like to see based on what plug that your vehicle has. Um, but once you've selected the charging station, you'll see all the information about it and you'd be able to navigate to it. Um, also in that menu is uh, the ability to obviously turn that off and then see the range that you have based on how much uh, your state of charge is. So you'll see a circle on the map um, and then that's where you're, based on how you've been driving, that's how much uh, estimated range you have uh, currently. All right, let's uh, talk about uh, efficiency charts next. Uh, so you'll see here that I'm driving and uh, I have the consumption tab open and then I also have the five mile tab selected. Uh, and uh, I'm about to go down a hill so you'll see that my efficiency is going to start to go down. Uh, it's measured in miles on the X axis and on the Y axis is the watt hours per mile. Uh, so you'll see that as I go down the hill I'm becoming more efficient and then the graph will go down. The, the dotted line that you see running across the graph is 
the average efficiency over the last five miles. So if I was to select, select 10 miles, you would see the average efficiency over those last 10 miles. Um, and then based on that efficiency, you'll also see your range. So that could vary based on what your average efficiency is and what the estimated range is on the left-hand side by the, by the battery icon. So as you see that I'm driving down the hill right now, that uh, my efficiency is plummeting in a good sense, <laughs> meaning I'm becoming more efficient. Um, and if it was to go below zero, uh, it would go into green, meaning that I'm regening uh, energy back into, into the battery pack. Now, no matter what tab you have open, on the bottom of the screen, you'll always have your music bar and you're able to pause the music, you're able to select the next song, and you could also see what song is playing and the, the progress of it. If you click anywhere on the bottom there, you'll open up the menu for the music, and here you're able to select the source as well as see more information about uh, what song is playing. So uh, here I am trying to drive at 70 miles an hour, and plus I press a small button, but uh, <laughs> once I press it, you see you could select the, the next song and uh, also change volume and uh, things like that. I wish I could uh, play the music that I'm playing, but uh, the one thing that I have heard from everyone that posts videos on YouTube is that YouTube's algorithm for copyright is a mess, so I am not taking that chance uh, with basically my first video, so <laughs> I apologize about that. Um, but once you're done with uh, selecting your music and all that, you could always press the exit and go back to whatever tab you were on. And here's just a, another example of me uh, selecting the, the music icon and uh, switching to the, to the next song. We should also discuss internet radio. So uh, once you select internet radio, you will see the list of stations that you have selected. So by me opening it up, I have three stations selected here. Um, so you're able to play it uh, from here. And you'll see that as soon as I press it, that uh, the station starts to play. Um, if you wanted to add more stations to here, you go to menu, playback source, and then you're able to select internet radio. From here you can add stations uh, and then it'll immediately populate with the most popular stations. Uh, so you could either select these, which I'm doing right now, or you can search for a particular station that, uh, that you'd like. And then once you've uh, added them, you'll see them in your internet radio that they've been added and then you can play them uh, as well. So let's finish this uh, topic off with uh, the YouTube tab and the internet tab. So you see here that once I click the YouTube tab, I'm able to have full YouTube. Uh, you can sign in, select any uh, video you like to watch. Uh, on the top right hand side, you see a bunch of shortcuts to go back and refresh the page. And uh, you have the search bar to select uh, any video that you'd like to watch. Um, and going into the internet browser, you see that you have uh, an internet browser here. And then obviously by going into the browser, you can select any website that you'd want to go to. So over here, I'm just going to my website and uh, it loads the page and I'd be able to use it just like it would be on uh, any computer. Okay, let's talk about the battery tab. So over here, you can see each individual cell voltage that makes up my battery pack. Um, I have 96 cells, so I have uh, 96 values over there. And then below that, I have a bunch of useful information. Uh, for example, I'm able to select the time that I'd like to charge my car. So over here, I'm setting the time that I'd like. And as soon as I hit OK, you'll see that the value has changed. Um, so below each individual cell voltage, I have the amperage. Uh, and you'll see that it's live, so as I'm driving, that value is changing. And so is actually each individual cell voltage. It, it shows you live. So as I accelerate, you'll see that each cell itself is dipping. And with regen, it, it will increase. Um, so to the right of my amperage, I have my current uh, amp hours of the battery pack, as well as the voltage. And then I also have the minimum and the high voltage of each battery cell. And then I also have the high and the low temperature reading from my thermistors. One thing to note about uh, some of these functionalities, like setting the time to charge, is that your BMS needs to be able to support it. Uh, if your BMS does not have uh, a CAN bus communication system for setting the time, uh, there's ways around it, but it, it wouldn't be uh, a very simple job to, to implement it. So that's just one thing to, to note. Now, if you were having any issues with your batteries or anything else with your car, you're able to go into these developer tools. Um, and here you can see that if you press record, you'll be recording your entire canvas of your vehicle. So all the communications will be recorded. And then as soon as you hit stop, you're able to send it to me with the press of a button. Uh, and then I'll be able to analyze that data and send you any corrections via over there updates or tell you if you're having any issues. Um, and my recommendations on how to fix them, they may be having to do with the MCU or they may have to do with anything else in your vehicle. So that'll pretty much wrap up this video. Um, I hope I gave you a better understanding of how this uh, MCU works. And uh, if you still have any questions or you want to see some more footage or 
uh, see what's coming up in our future updates, uh, please feel free to email me or call the number you see on my website. I'm going to end this video by putting some images of the display that may have been hard to see while I was driving with a, a shaky cam. And I'm also going to put up a couple of things that I was not able to show, like my iDrive controller and a bunch of other tabs. So I hope you guys liked this video. And uh, if you did, please uh, like and share. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Until next time.